end of day one um yeah it's breathtaking it's it's hard to put into words just exactly what kind of view we were what we come across and seeing that valley open up below us as we come over the top of that hill and i was just as excited this time as i was the first time that i did it yeah so riding over uh the pass up into canada was a pretty good time uh, a lot of good trail a uh, little bit of dynamic changes here and there uh, a lot of in and out of the trees pretty good views had a lot of epic cliffs to look off of and a lot of good scenic photo opportunities for everybody so it was a good time it was gorgeous some of that land you're just never going to uh never going to see you know there's very little population over there not many towns or anything it's just desolate beautiful country it's always a good time you know especially when you get with people that you like and and you're out there just enjoying the ride and, and having a good time and camaraderie and meeting new people and and uh, it just it was a fantastic time had a great day uh, we made it up to uh, Canada it was like 80 ish miles something like that um, if I remember right uh, we peaked at 6758 is I think what my GPS told me uh, the weather held up great the temperature couldn't have been any better one minute you're in the sagebrush and then the uh, you know an hour later you're in the woods um, an hour later, you're at 6,500 feet. Love it. Then you get so close to the border and you kind of just have to stop and understand that that's the border and that's it. <laughs> then you have to uh, take a break, take a chill pill, and then get back on the trail and start heading south. So it was a good time. Today, we're going to be heading south uh, towards uh, Chelan, uh, if not Wenatchee, if we can make it there on time. Um, but uh, yeah, it should be some, some pretty gnarly trails. It gets a little more aggressive as you go south. Uh, the trails aren't quite um, so smooth, there's a little bit more rocky nature to them. And uh, as, you, as you start to head through, through the passes, you'll notice that the, uh, the ruts and stuff start getting a little more aggressive and you have to start riding the tops of them or just slowing down to get through them. And if you have a low clearance machine, you have to start taking that into consideration. Um, you'll start bottoming out, taking out A-arms or uh, trailing arms, things like that. So um, yeah, good rides are, are down south waiting for us and uh, it'll be a good time to uh, get into a little bit more of an aggressive riding and a little bit more uh, technical challenge.
Hey, hey, did you see the bird fly in here? No. A bird hit here and it literally <laughs> ran on my chair. Oh, all you see is this. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Unfortunately, Chelan doesn't really have many back streets. Uh, we, we, Zach and I spent some time looking at the maps and it just come down to the fact that it was like, you know what? If we sp we could spend probably two hours trying to trying to ride back streets to kind of stay out of people's way, but it just it, we just decided that quicker was better. Okay, so the way that we did it earlier is the ideal way. The guy in the back, if he hollers out car, I will pull over and we'll let him let him by. Okay. The peak that we hit was 7,200 feet. Uh, all in, we made it about 165 miles before we had our, our next hiccup. You can set a route and a plan, but sometimes you have to tweak it on the way. And uh, what I've learned in this sport, you can't, uh, you can't stick to a, an absolute plan. You, you just gotta roll with it because you can't foresee breaking belts or axles or anything like that. And you can't worry yourself sick about it. So you just, uh, you just roll with what you're given and make the best of it. what you do, Bam? Busted, dude. Busted? You're going too hard. Is that from running from the cops? Oh, that's nasty. The goal is always to make it to your next stop with no breakdowns. Um, this particular breakdown uh, just happened to be at a camp, uh, which was pretty cool. If you could choose a place to break down, I'm not sure this is this could there could be any better than this. All in all, I really think that it's kind of an ideal. You know, nobody wants to break down, but it was kind of an ideal place to do it. We just got to uh, take care, be smart, and uh, not break anything. But uh, I think we did well. You know, we made some good mileage. Uh, and just an axle, that, that's a pretty easy fix. And thankfully, I have friends over here. Well, I have friends I text, and they text their friends and text their friends and. I don't think it was an hour later and he already had it dialed in on, had somebody locally. Tracy Parkhurst came through and saved the day for us, gave us his axle. And uh, I can't say enough good things about this community. That's what it's all about, just, uh, relying on one another, having a great time. You know, what can I give you for this axle? Man, don't worry about it, we'll, we'll figure it out. That's, that's how it should be. That's kind of the beauty of off-road sports is the camaraderie and the, and the willingness to jump in and, and help a brother out. You don't, you don't get that very many places anymore. And that's one of the reasons that I'm so wholehearted about this, this industry. Thank you.